In today's episode, we're going to be working with Jason Rose from Rupes. Paint enhancements, paint corrections are important, but how far do you go? You need to understand clear coat. So we're here with Jason Rose from Rupes, and we're going to be talking about trends with paint systems and with polishing compounds and polishers and all of that information, as well as measuring the paint. We know that paint is getting thinner with newer cars, so we're going to talk about that as well and how far do you go when it comes to polishing paint. Let's start with the paint systems, new cars, old cars. What are some of the things we need to look out for? Yeah, so I've been tracking this the last six years, but every new model year that gets launched by the car factories, uh, they are putting on thinner and thinner paint. And any professional detailer, if you're tracking this, you've observed the same thing, that paint's getting thinner. But if uh, you're not professional and you're working on your own car mm. and you bought a new car like within the last three to five years, you should be aware that the amount of material you have as far as your paint system is getting thinner and thinner every new model year. Now, at some point they got to stop, I hope. And I hope. We're going to have a stable paint thickness, but yep. the trend now is it's getting thinner and thinner. So, I mean, for new detailers, when you start getting into polishing, that's going to be a scary thing. You're going to hear that and you're like, now I don't know how far to go. You know, you see wool pads and rotaries and, and compounds and that will kind of scare you. But now, how do you tell if your paint is thin or thick or, you know, how do you tell? Yeah. So we got some gauges to show you. Well, you can't tell by looking at it. So just observing paint, you're not going to tell paint thickness. And the reason this is important, and we should kind of clarify that yeah. when we're removing paint defects, when you, when you polish out a scratch in your paint, you're not actually removing the scratch. You're removing the paint around the scratch. And that's why paint thickness is important. Yes. Because if we keep digging for scratches and we overdo the defect removal part, uh, we can actually thin our, our paint too much. And that's a problem for the future of that paint. So and it's essentially, you may have heard this term leveling. You're removing that clear coat and, you know, kind of reaching the bottom of that valley of the scratch. If you view a scratch like a, a big V. And that's basically what you're doing is you're leveling all the surrounding paint. So you're removing clear coat to get to the bottom of that scratch so it's not refracting the light and so you don't see that scratch yeah. anymore. So, but there's only so far you can go. So we can use technology to help. Um, if you don't have paint gauges that will measure paint thickness, the other option for you is you just automatically go with the least aggressive methods yep. and you treat your paint as if it's thin and then you're not being over aggressive with these aggressive products. So that's mm -hmm. one strategy, just go least aggressive. Now the other thing you could do is use some technology that can help you understand the paint thickness. Now I want to clarify one thing, these devices here, um, well two out of the three, I have three here, but two out of the three, they will tell you the total film build, meaning a layered paint system, you're going to understand the total thickness, which right. is not what we really want to know. It's not ideal. We want to know the top coat only, Right. Um, but this kind of helps you understand how much you have to work with. Exactly. So here are two devices that we use at the Bigfoot Academy in Denver. Uh, this is a brand called X-Tech, and I'm, I'm not pushing any particular brand. I'm not paid by anybody to talk about anything. So I, these are just two products that we've kind of settled on at our academy. Uh, X-Tech, because it's a good value product, for about 200 bucks, you can get a device that will measure on ferrous metal and aluminum and you don't have to tell it, it automatically knows. You just yep. put it on the car and it knows. And then we've got this product here by uh, Next PTG that is another uh, step up from this. Mm -hmm. And it synchronizes and talks to your phone through an app. Yeah. And uh, this kind of is a great way to measure paint as well. Yeah, I have this kit personally and, and I really like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that one too. I actually use and like them both. If money is no object and you just want to go ham and get something really uh, advanced in technology, there's um, Defelsco has the Pause Detector 200. It's their 200. They have a lot of different versions in this brand. But 200, this device claims to measure up to three layers of the paint system, which yeah. is the primer, the base, and the clear. You're gonna be probably in this realm because of maybe budget and, and ease of use. So what, what are the pros to cons to using something like that that you may wanna spend the money on as opposed to something a little bit cheaper? Well, I've 
actually paid the money f for our academy to use this and I, I'm in a position now where that's not the one I use all the time. Mm. I tend to use these. And the reason is because this product was actually created for another industry. So it's used to measure up to three layers of other systems that are much thicker than automotive clear and automotive paint system. Uh -huh. It is actually fairly accurate with other systems that are on industrial equipment and buildings. They actually measure you know, different coatings on buildings with this. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I find that with automotive paint, which is relatively thinner and getting thinner, this is actually not the, the best way to go. Interesting. You can kind of get what's called false positives on the thickness. Because we're dealing with such thinness anyway, literally like two sheets of paper, you know, yeah. together. I like to count it in mils because it's easier for me instead of microns, but that's, that's so, so small. These seem to be a little bit more accurate with the total thickness, but how do you figure out what's the top layer? You're gonna have to kind of do some math and some kind of guessing. So we're gonna show you some tips on that. So this is a, like a computer, it boots up. This is telling you it's ready to measure in mils. Yep, and mills. you can actually set it for microns if that's what you want. But this is an electromagnetic probe, just like this device has an electromagnetic probe. And uh, you need to put this flat to the surface. When we go over to the car here, make sure that this probe is flat to the surface, otherwise it will not read properly. So you're going to put that on. It's going to have a little ding. I don't know if you heard that little bell. And then it gives you a number. So this is 7.7 .7 mils, which is actually relatively thicker than what we're seeing on late model cars. This is an older car, and this is very standard. This is exactly what you would see on a car of this age, but the newer models you're going to see less than that. Just to understand what this number means, it's the total thickness, primer, base, and clear. Yep. Now, we can safely assume, and it's a guess, safely assume that half of this number, what we're reading, is clear coat. And you're going to be wrong sometimes because it is kind of an assumption, it's a guess. It gives you kind of that position where you can make a go or no go decision. Mm -hmm. Am I gonna get aggressive with my defects or am I not and I'm gonna do something mellow? Exactly. So that number that you referred to earlier, if you're measuring on a device like this or, or this one, if you're measuring three mils or less, that is where you need to really reconsider your procedures on that car. Three mils or less means that your clear coat could be one and a half mils thick, which is less than, uh, say for example, your trash bag at home that you take the trash out in, that's two mils, sometimes four mils. So we're not talking about a lot of material. And those numbers are gonna fluctuate throughout the car. You know, you might have some that'll bump up to like 10, 12 mils. It's an indication that it probably was repainted and it doesn't necessarily mean you have, you know, six mils of clear coat because it's it's layered. You know, the, the yeah. painter's not gonna strip off everything and start from the bottom. He's gonna layer on top of the existing clear coat, maybe sand a little bit. When you see that like 12 plus mils or so or high numbers, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can cut that in half and you have five or six mils of clear coat. It could be that it's layered. <laughs> the, it's stacked, mils. exactly. Yeah. So you still might end up with two mils of clear coat or a mil and a half or so. It's kind of a guessing game and that's just the automotive world. We have to kind of use some common sense. Going least aggressive is always safer. Don't get too influenced by guys who are doing full corrections. They know what they're doing. They probably measured. They know what they're doing. You can't do that on every single car. So what this does, this, uh links up to an app on your phone, and that shows you right about the same thickness. It's about a half a mil off yep, yep. from the other device, which is kind of normal. You'll see a little bit of variance. And as you can see, they're all in the uh, mid to high sixes. And those are good numbers. You, you, yep. I'd feel safe, sure. even doing a full correction on this, I'd feel sure. pretty safe doing that. I would too. And the key to proper customer service and, and caring for someone's car too is just good communication. Because when you start getting into polishing, that can be a very dangerous realm if you don't know what you're doing. And if you burn through something, you're gonna have to pay for that. The majority of our polishing services are gonna be paint enhancements. So we're not going in too aggressive. We're getting 50 to 75% of the swirls. Yeah. It's daily drivers. Yes. Customers are more than happy with that. And maybe you might go a little bit more on some areas that have some heavier scratches and so on, but still 
tread carefully, don't just attack it with the heaviest stuff possible. So now that we have some knowledge about clear coat systems, let's get into some of the products in the pads. Now Rupes has a really nice lineup of pads and products that are actually safe and very, very easy to use. Tell us about those. Yeah, first, um, before we talk about individual products, we wanna talk about the fact that Rupes has developed and manufactured and internally designed and formulated all of our products. So one, one of the unique things about Rupus is that all the things that contribute to the result you get when you're polishing on paint, and there's four things. There's a tool, there's a pad, there's a compound, and there's a person. Those yep. four things create that result. Rupus specializes in synergistically coordinating all of those components to get that result. We're the only company in the industry that does this. There's lots of companies that will sell different parts uh, or sell a whole system. We internally manufacture the pads, the liquids, the tool, everything. Nice. So having said that, the system with our big Bigfoot 15 millimeter polisher, which is a very safe to use. If you're new to detailing, this is actually a great first choice of a tool. And this has got the dual action with the, uh, the random rotation, which is a safety feature. And this is a great place to start. But with our system, we actually have a recommended test spot combination. That's our DA fine yellow cap liquid. If you, if you know three colors, you know our whole system, blue, yellow, and white, you know the whole system. But this yellow combo is what we recommend for detailers to do a test spot on the car, kind of understand the paint hardness, understand how the defects are being removed, and then you can make a decision on going more or less aggressive after that. This is the starting place. That's excellent, and actually that's something I teach a lot is, especially with the, the paint enhancements where you don't know the hardness or the softness of the clear coat, you don't know how it's gonna respond, is we start in the middle of the road with something like this. Yeah. And most of the time this will do it, and then you adjust you know, maybe some of your technique with the polisher, but usually you're gonna get uh, your baseline from here yeah. and then you move up or down. So that's a really, really good tip for beginning polishers. And then the move up, if you find that you want more aggressive defect removal, it would be our blue colored product. So anything with a blue cap, DA coarse compound combined with any blue colored pad, but this is our DA wool pad. So this combo is actually a step up from this level of defect removal, you can expect more defect removal with this combo. And again, it's still safe to use. I mean, yeah. if you're gonna use this product, are we talking about like excessive heat buildup or dusting or anything like that? What are some of the benefits to using that? Well, one? the entire system is actually made to manage heat and to like not have very dusty products. Good. We don't Good. like that. Yeah. But all of these uh, levels here are intended to actually do paint correction in one corrective step. Nice. So the, when this says DA coarse, it actually, it sounds scary, like it's coarse like sandpaper, but it is a cutting and a finishing product. So you're doing both of those in one step. So is that diminishing? Uh, that's a whole nother technical question. We can actually spend an hour on that one. I bet topic. we could. <laughs> I know that that's a hot um, spot. That's a, you know, that's a question a lot of detailers will ask because maybe they're in forums and maybe they've watched other videos from years ago, that that was definitely a very important thing. Don't focus too much on that because you go down that rabbit hole and it just, yeah. it'll confuse you. The main thing, the, the most important thing is doing a test spot and just kind of working on your technique. Everybody kind of has a different technique to polishing, different ways of holding it ergonomically, yeah. whatever's comfortable for you. So don't focus too much on the weird little nuances of how the polishes are made or all of that. I would, I would agree with you 100%. So yeah. if you're new to detailing, uh, don't get wrapped up in those buzzwords about diminishing, non-diminishing. The really, the focus is on performance. And, Definitely. And just see how the results work with a fully designed system. Yeah. Um, but blue is our upper level, more stronger correction. Yellow is the mid, and then we have uh, a yellow, which is our Uno Pure with yep. white products or white uh, pads. Now, in addition to those three levels, the blue, yellow, and the white, we also have these Uno branded products. Now, in the Rupus line, if you see an Uno branded product, what this means is it's a sub-brand that means one product, that's what Uno, Uno. One product that can be used with any tool and any pad. So these are very specific. This is made for dual action. This is made for dual action. Made for dual action. We have another system made for rotary. But when you use these products in our product line, any tool, any pad. So you could pair up, say something like the Uno Protect or the Uno Advanced um, with a pad like this and start with this. This yeah. would be your all-in-one. So that kind of depends on your packages and your services, how you set them up. Because sometimes our paint enhancements will use something like this. And at the end of the job, 
it's all done. We don't have to worry about topping it or putting more protection or anything like that. Yeah. It's all done. However, what are the differences between these two? Yeah, so they're both protective products. Uno Protect, as uh, the name implies, it is a protection product, but as you said, an all-in-one. So once around the car, you can expect to remove defects, create gloss and slickness and clarity, and then lay down three months of protection. Nice. So this would be considered your, your express detail, your express exterior. Mm -hmm. Uno Advanced is a step up in performance from Uno Protect. It's also an all-in-one, but it has other bells and whistles. Mm. So the other features of Uno Advance is more durability. This is measured in a, up to a year of durability. That's versus impressive. Three months. The product can be used as a maintenance polish, and that is for those of you that are installing uh, paint coatings. This can be a maintenance polish on an aged paint coating, for, for example, oh. three to six months later when you're trying to get that customer back and just do a refresh on the car. And this will boost the performance, add some hydrophobicity, add some slickness, help that coating to last longer. So you can just go right over a coated vehicle with this stuff, with like a soft pad or even a yellow pad? Well, as Uno implies, any any pad, any tool, but when cool. you're using it as a maintenance polish, we have a specific recommendation, and that is the uh, Ultra Fine Foam. Oh, cool. So if you're intending to put this on an age coating, this is really the pad to do, because if you go more aggressive on any of these other pads, you begin to remove too much of the coating. And the strategy here is to help the coating last longer, you need to use the least aggressive uh, ultra fine foam pad. Ah, that's really, really good to know. Yeah. Okay, excellent. And that, that'll kind of like fill in the gaps if any coating is starting to show its age and, and starting to kind of maybe fail. Yeah. What about high spots from coatings? Can that level them down? Yeah, if you got a little more aggressive like the yellow foam or yellow wool, if you've applied the coating and notice you have some high spots and you want to kind of level those out, yep. then that, this product can do that. And nice. at the same time of doing that, you're adding solids onto the surface and you're adding protection. I mean, high spots usually gonna be like a small little streak. It'd probably be really good to grab like the little three inch polisher, maybe the three inch, you know, white pad like this or right. the yellow pad and just hit just that, that spot, isolate it. So you're not going a huge area, just isolate that little high spot. I've done that before. It works really well in removing the high spot, not removing all the, all coating. the coating. So you don't have to worry about removing the coating and all that hard work that you put into it. Yeah, cause some so. people um, I'm aware of when they get a high spot, they actually remove all the coating, go yeah. back to the paint, reapply the coating. And this way, this could be a quick, as you mentioned, a three yep. inch pad diameter repair. And then yeah. you're not removing material, you're actually adding material. In the case of not working with a coating, Uno Advance does a great uh, express exterior, but maybe the customer wants a little more durability besides three months. Yep. So now you have that product to do it. Can those be topped with other sealants too? Sure. I mean, how well do they work with other spray sealants? Yeah, they, uh, they can be topped, but I would caution people if you're gonna use a topper on top of products like this, you don't use the category product called a spray detailer. The spray detailers are, are laying down some silicone. What they will do is they will change the physical properties or the surface properties of this product. So when it comes to the toppers, it, you know, what have you done for me lately? And whatever is on top is going to dictate the behavior of the surface. Exactly. So you can actually lose water beading. You can lose some slickness. You can change the surface by topping with a product that yeah. isn't compatible with a coating or with a polymer sealant. Just spray, like see what works. Uh, sorry, the sprayable sorry. polymer sealant that before I skipped my mind, but rather than a detail spray, yeah. use a product that's called a sprayable polymer sealant because ah. that adds value to your system rather than taking away from it. Good to know. Okay, good yeah. to know. Yeah, so you might want to find your, that right product that works with that. And there's lots of details that'll give tips like that. And they'll say, hey, this product works really good paired with this. Yeah. You'll find that, you know, um, among the detailing community. So that's good. Keep an eye out for that and see what works and, and what doesn't as well. That's really important. Thank you for that information. That's really, really good to know. And I know a lot of guys, when they see these all-in-ones also, and I, I've used other ones in the past that were great. These work really good for mobile detailers yeah. um, oh, because okay. they can work in the sun, they can work outdoors, yes. and mobile detailers have no choice but to do that, which we've been doing that for years. And also the way that we work these. So I have found typically with all-in-one products like this, some detailers just slap it on a pad and very very quickly buzz through the paint without doing much 
defect removal, almost like applying it like a wax. And they're not seeing the result that they want from that. So what's the best way to actually use these products? Glad you brought that up because the technique that's used to apply these can actually dictate the level of permanent defect removal or the, lever the level of a hiding defect. So if you use these products as, as a, you're just spreading wax, you're going to activate the fillers and we're unapologetic it does have fillers these yep. these do these do not yep. but these are intended to fill defects if that's what you want to do so if you just spread it like wax it's going to activate those fillers and do a lot of cover up and lay down solids but if you want to actually remove defects you treat this like a compound application exactly so you're going to slow down your arm speed you're going to work this product in and then it will activate the abrasives and then you're actually removing defects. Exactly, and that actually can work with other products across the board. You know, we've used other ones in, in the same fashion, using a medium cut or even a fine cut and you actually work it, like you said, like a compound, like a polish, put some time into it and then you see results. And I've actually done testing where I'll spray down that panel with panel wipe heavily wipe it and will a little bit come back i mean the, the smallest amount but comparing it to what i just polished stark difference yeah. it yeah. actually removed defects not just fillings learn to use them properly and like you said use it like you're compounding or polishing the panel it'll take you longer but you'll get better results all right so that is it guys lots of information i hope you really enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it as well if you want to pick up some of these products as well as these paint depth gauges especially the uh, next PTG, there's actually two versions now on Car Supplies Warehouse. Any of the Rupes polishes, pads, and the beautiful Rupes Bigfoot polishers, then definitely check out the links down below. Don't forget to use code Miranda10, you'll save 10% at Car Supplies Warehouse. I want to thank Jason Rose. Thank you My for being a guest here and just blowing our minds with all this information. This is really, really good to know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click that bell so you don't miss stuff. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you.